This is Nicolas Deschamps. His father was one of Salvador Dali's closest friends from the 1950s until his passing in 1989. Growing up, Nicolas would spend summers in Spain with Dali and on a few occasions would play in his studio as a child. Today, he is the world's leading Salvador Dali expert. When Sotheby's needs to verify a Dali painting, this is who they call. And I was lucky enough to sit down with him for over an hour to do an interview, and I asked him about Dali's legacy. And what he said surprised me. The, the legacy, I would say for me, the legacy is the search of spirituality and faith. The, his main quest is a, is a spiritual quest for the faith. So he was very afraid about death and looking to acquire faith to attend serenity. And when he's talking about spirituality, he's not necessarily talking about religion. Nicolas said one of the most misunderstood things about Dali is that when he uses some moment of the Bible or you recycle a painting uh, linked to the Bible from the Renaissance, then the people are like, no, no, no. But it's not, it, it, it is not because he's, uh, he's a Catholic, it is because it's, uh, it's a moment that depicts you know, a, a, a strong uh, text or a strong happening in the in the Bible. It, maybe if he if he was born in uh, I don't know in Lebanon or whatever, it would have been the Quran. But he's born in the, in uh, Spain, so it's the the, the the roots are the, the the Catholic. The good question would have if he if he had born in a Jewish family. One day I had a long uh, discussion with a Jewish friend of mine. And we were discussing about the science and the religion. And he say in the Jew religion, never you try to mix the two. We know that it's two different uh, things. And never we try to, to connect or to study one versus the other or whatever. Which is not the, the, the case in the Christianity. Why? Because Christianity is bicephal. You have the, the, the power on earth and you have the spiritual power. The interesting thing with Dali is that he balanced these worlds of spirituality and science. While he was focused on spirituality, he also studied physics, mathematics, and psychology. And balancing these two things is always a challenge to, to, uh, to merge science and spirituality because <laughs> everybody wants to have the proof of the existence of God. But Dali's goal with his imagery wasn't to give you proof of the existence of God, but rather to make you challenge your own beliefs and to make you interrogate your subconscious. The, the thing is that you, you, can, you can say he's crazy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But the way he was painting was to ensure that the people will, even if they don't agree with him, they can say, wow, the painting are beautiful like the, the great master of the Renaissance. You know? And the Renaissance was important to Dali not only for what it meant to him as an artist, but also because if you look at the painting of the Renaissance, it's very linked to spirituality. When the bomb atomic happened, then Dali was convinced that there will be a, a, a Renaissance, a second Renaissance. But the world was, at turn after Second World War, the world have, 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 have turned completely uh, materialist. He was alone for, for, for the quest of spirituality. A big reason Dali's spirituality is misunderstood is because for a long time, the second half of his career was disregarded by the art community. Dali was in the Surrealist in 29. Then he was ejected in 34. But they, they, they knew that he was so powerful that more or less he was still connected. But at the end, 39, 40, he left to US. And then all his painting from the very surrealist period doesn't have an uh, angel represented, doesn't have uh, a um, biblical uh, representation. And then in 3940, he turns to that, but the, the second part of his creation after 40 wasn't that popular in the classical art world. It, it was rediscovered recently, like the 20 the 20 uh, last year. I was curious what has led to this newfound appreciation for the second half of Dali's career and for his spiritual works. And Nicolas believes it's because of the evolution of the society. While people are still materialistic, there's a growing push towards spirituality. And again, that's not to say people are becoming more and more religious. Oxford Dictionary defines spirituality as the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. So Dali's spiritual paintings were less about preaching religion and more so his response to a materialistic society. Two years ago, I was in Shanghai, 
So I went to the area where you have all the painting, the gallery and things like that. Wow. And then I was at a dinner and they were a young Chinese painter. And I said, but I think you have to rediscover your, your country. You have to go back to your roots, to your civilization, because China during the, the Cultural Revolution, I think the period was like five or six years, everything had been washed. That was the, the discussion. One can say, well, but you recycle the past. It's not exactly that. But it's understandable because the guys they say, no, now we want to forget the past and we want to make new stuff. You say, okay, but you will see, it's not strong enough. And if you look to Dali, he was always looking at the great master and the past. And the reason Dali studied these great masters of the Renaissance is they were using spirituality as a way to move society from the Middle Ages towards modernity. And Dali was doing his best to push society away from materialism and towards something greater. And that's the reason he studied these great Renaissance painters, because if you integrate the old work of the great master or even before, it's because you continue the work the message. This is why as an artist it's important to study the past. It's not so that you can recreate what those who came before you did, it's so that you can pick up where they left off and continue the mission. This doesn't mean you take the same path, it means you pick up where they left off and blaze a new trail. This doesn't mean you're going to complete the mission. In Dali's case, I think in the 70s, he gave up. He continued his job to see what was going on around him, the new discovery, and blah, blah, blah. But then he was like, I'm tired because I didn't uh, create a movement of renaissance or uh, look, the, the, the people are too materialist. But that doesn't mean his work was in vain. The goal of art is to make a ripple effect across generations. And so even though Dali himself didn't create a second renaissance, his work can still impact someone who can pick up the torch and continue his mission, which really was a continuation of the mission of the great masters of the renaissance. Thanks for watching. My interview with Nicolas from the Artwell podcast, which devoted an entire season to studying Salvador Dali's life to find lessons for modern creatives. If you'd like to listen to my full interview with Nicola or learn more about Dali, you can find Artwell in the description or wherever you get your podcasts.